Wow. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being here. I was hoping, you know, afternoon crowd, <laughs> we'd get a little dispersal. I'm so happy you're here. No, not for you, my dear. <laughs> um, so, Fairly, that, that was so beautiful. It was immersive, celestial, molecular. I mean, there's so many. I can keep going, like free association. Um, but I wanted to start by taking the cue from our previous um, our friends and colleagues, sisters. How are you feeling? <laughs> Beyond nervous and just grateful. Mm. I mean, um, there's been many mentions of Suzanne Césaire today, mm. but the cultural lineage that Simone and Rashida and Tina and Saidi are making here are boundless. When we, I see all the baby girls here, I keep thinking, what will they say 90 years from now? Mm. What will they have experienced and what will have changed and what will they continue changing? Mm. Um, so grateful and very nervous. <laughs> Um, I wanted to start more general, in a general way, before getting into spe specifics. Um, I'd love for you to talk about this transition from painting, from working with drawing and painting and figuration in an extremely labored, delicate, intricate manner to time-based media. And if you could say a little bit about that process. Yeah, so painting for me has always been a time loophole in the sense that you come in as a viewer at any point and the pain itself is just a marker of my body. There is a different ways of entering. So me going into animation was with a reluctance because as a subjective time person, I'm always, always late. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, trying to find other, you know, there, there are so many physics terms for um, alternate uses of time, including one CPT, which is, uh, <laughs> let me say it properly, charge, parity, and time reversal symmetry, <laughs> <laughs> which, um, you know, it's how to, how, how to conceptualize a reversal of time. It's the only um, scientific formula they have found for conceptualizing our bound laws of reality with um, another potentiality. Mm -hmm. And I just kept thinking, we have had models for this in many, many ways, one of them being the cosmogram, accessing, you know, spiritual and physical time. Mm. And so that's, that was one of the inspirations for going into, into animation, that it, it does give you a way of navigating mm. within a time format that expands and explodes it. Thank you <laughs> for evoking that. Um, I was interested in understanding or having us say aloud in this archived context, your influences, um, because I think they flow so seamlessly into a multiplicity that's expressed in your art um, it, as a whole, but I'm curious to know a bit more your influences in terms of literature, in terms of um, film, and um, we spoke a little bit about um, Octavia Butler, uh, Kamal Brathwaite, um, magical realism, um, you know, so I'm just curious or to hear more. There's such a bounty. I almost feel like any, any slice that we give today will, will only be a hint of the entire feast. Um, but there is a tight grip, there's a Venn diagram of Drexia and Octavia that have taken over a lot of creatives. Um, mm -hmm. And I am in lineage and share their wonder at the, the, the making of these, um, the Drexia duo mm -hmm. and Octavia's, um, specifically for me, um, Xenogenesis. 
Lilith's brood um, is something, the loy within that, this um, third space of being that is, um, has been so generative. Um, but really exciting, right? I mean, there's just doorways on doorways. Um, and so um, those are two of them. And of course, I really appreciated David Diggs's novella, mm -hmm. um, The Deep, which I recommend everybody reads. It's such a beautiful um, way of navigating uh, the nine album um, notes of the Drexia myth into um, one comprehensive narrative form. Um, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> before <Okay>. I spiral. <laughs> Speaking of spiral, that's another influence, is just, um, just this poetics of resistance mm -hmm. that, that um, trying to, again, avoid time mm -hmm. or the strictures of time. Mm -hmm. So I noticed in the film there is this tension between the movement, well, the sound, the movement of the figures in this deep space um, and the text, or our act of reading, so our act of listening, our act of the act of reading, and um, I'm curious if you could say a little bit more about the excerpt mm -hmm. that is guiding us in, in essence. Through. Yeah. So um, it is out of deep admiration that I um, showed the text as a as a grounding form here. It is still a work in progress, and. Um, you might be the only people who see this form of it, depending on, on how things proceed. But there is um, an excerpt I'd like to read again from it that is um, foundational to it. Um, so it goes, uh, and it's something that was part of the film. During the remembrance, mind left body, not long from now, the entirety of the Wanjiro people would be entranced by history, they would move, but according to instinct and random pulses in their brains, and decipherable from a seizure, they would be in no position to fend for themselves in that state, so they built a giant mud sphere in defense, its walls thick and impenetrable. They called it the womb, and it protected the ocean as much as it protected them. Mm -hmm. So this um, space of fecundity, um, and the protection within it. So much of, if we're speaking of lineage, matrilineage has been um, sometimes imposed. I am so honored to be within such strong matrilineal lines. And I'm just also trying to honor the people who did not have a choice in that and whose very reproduction became the means of capitalism. Um, how do you resist? How do you resist both? Mm. Or, or willingly embrace what is truly yours mm. while being in resistance? How do we love when we're in battle, you know? Mm. So there's so many motifs, I mean, in your work beyond this animation as well, but was so strong to me, this um, sensation of immersion or submersion. And I wonder if you could speak a little bit, you know, to that as a landing or a floating or a position that, positionality that you wanted your audience to embrace. Um, yeah, I mean, as someone who was born in an island and raised in a peninsula, I don't know how to swim. So, <laughs> but I've never been afraid of water. And I always, um, I know, for instance, no matter where I live, I've had a pretty nomadic upbringing that if I'm ever repressing my emotions, there's always a flood around me. Mm. So water is something that follows me and I feel really bound to. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to bring that. Um, part of, um, it's, it's pretty amazing how part of both um, in the ideation of Octavia's novels, especially um, the Earth Seed series and in Drexia, it goes from being deeply internal to the earth to being ultimately in space. Mm -hmm. um, so this submersion being in both, mm -hmm. being something that binds both. Mm -hmm. um, that also gives me the opportunity to move to another strong motif, which is the role of women 
I mean, and it's echoed through Simone's work, obviously, through Rashida's work, through our own convening here. Um, so I wonder if you could speak about the role of women in your, in your work in general, um, and also the connection to water. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, you know, since we're here, <laughs> Oshun and Yemoya, just full obeisance. Um, I feel like they have informed so much of all of our practices. Mm. Um, I remember even Simone mentioning a flood that happened in her house and mentioning Mamiwata, that mm. these are um, ideas and technologies and energies. If I mean, it's kind of based to even call it a technology mm. because it transcends, mm. but within the language of science, there is a label of what is, again, useful. And to um, go back to Madeline, how do you quantify what has not been contained and, and assigned as uh, useful? Mm. But these um, ideologies that transcend all of that, mm. that have helped us and continue to um, guide our navigation mm. um, are, are the crucial foundation to it. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, sound, too, is, I mean, I think what's so masterful, I think, in this short, it's only five minutes, but it feels so long. It's almost, it's so immersive and beautiful, haunting, but also grounding too. It's like you, you, the combination structurally, you kind of hit it right on its um, peak. And the sound moves us too. So there's the text that grounds in a way. There's also these figures so elegant, so graceful. Um, and then the sound that is so, like the bass was there. It Thank was you. so intense. So I'm curious, say more. Yeah. So, um, I actually worked with another meta fan of the Drexia duo. He actually um, worked in Berlin and had been able to experience it for, like, you know, performances firsthand, um, Rob Walker. Mm -hmm. And one of the grounding, um, I guess, guiding points for the composition that I always wanted to bring is that fourth beat um, to try to just get to the heart, to the water. Mm -hmm. um, and then to lift certain notes so you felt the breath. Mm -hmm. And um, those are specific core notes that bring everything back up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always working with music. When to paint, I need music. And I wanted to bring that um, space mm -hmm. into the viewing. It was really important. The part of the title of the piece is Kalabi Yao which I, I had to bring up. Um, but it's this manifold model that is used um, for, specifically now, for string theory to ideate different um, modes of string theory. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the original title of one of the tracks from um, uh, one of the DJs of Draxia. Mm -hmm. uh, so trying to have this um, as a at least in theory, the, the theory that's being hailed being the guiding point for, or the connector between the sound. Mm. So you said fourth note? Fourth beat. Fourth beat, okay. Thanks for the correction. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so something that I wanna bring up as a misreading for me but it ends up not being a misreading because I think, in, well, you tell me. But I was, when I first watched the film, the kind of um, ma material that floats on its own, almost like coral, um, I thought was a really interesting way to also bring in um, these other kind of um, environmental stresses that we all have to contend with in the, uh, space of climate change, essentially, right? The loss of coral reef, how that affects us on land. Um, and you, you said that's interesting that 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 you that you see that it actually is this other quality that you needed to imagine in relationship to these figures. And I wonder if you could share a little bit about that. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you guys have um, 
how familiar you are with the Drexia myth, but essentially it is the ideation of this black Atlantis. It, these um, brilliant guys from Detroit basically reimagined the Middle Passage. What would have happened if the pregnant women, enslaved women who were thrown overboard had been able to survive and their babies had adapted to breathe underwater? This idea of breath that has been brought up in many of the conversations. Well, what is this extra breath? Um, and then pushing that forward, what kind of um, brilliant structures would have been built in this black Atlantis? And so if you are a water being, you wouldn't have steel and hard shelled um, structures. Mm -hmm. So I almost imagine these anemone-like extensions of lungs, ways of breathing, ways of extending breath, um, and coral reefs being the, the lungs of the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really glad you saw it that way. Mm -hmm. But this soft, um, luscious way of extending the body mm -hmm. that is not about, um, the armor is not uh, what we would expect in land. Mm -hmm. So I wanna circle back to Yam well, Yamiya and um, Oshun only because of color. Like I think that's my uh, association and how it symbols and how we recognize um, aspects of these um, deities. But the use of color in the animation, I would love to hear you speak more about that, how that also is place making. I'm interested in detail, so I hope that's okay for everybody. Oh no, of course. I'm like yeah. kind of wanting to get granular because I think those are the things, that's also a language, you know, and Absolutely. there's so much care and specificity, which also allows for it to enter us, right? So I would love to hear you say more. Yeah, um, so I, I tend to use color symbolically I, more than I, um, than I realize many times that the, I want to embed the lexicon of the Yoruba pantheon within my color theory. So mm -hmm. much of what we were taught was Joseph Albers and um, a very refracted appropriation of color theories from around the world. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to give it back mm -hmm. and to mark it. And when I paint, a lot of times they start as horizontal fields that are, um, I have to so I have to basically traverse over the entire surface. Mm -hmm. And many times it involves salt to try to just refract and crystallize and make patterns to then read from. So all the figures emerge out of what gravity dictates, what mm -hmm. the air dictates. Um, so starting with those elements, mm -hmm. it sounds so weird to say it that way, but um, essentially um, a prayer. Mm. Um, and hoping that through that guidance something can come through. Mm -hmm. But that's how the color mm -hmm. comes. First from this acknowledgement of a pantheon and then a theory, a practice, mm. and chance. Thank you. Yes, beautiful, yes. Um, there was also an, another detail in the film uh, this kind of kaleidoscopic or this kind of merging into the center or merging out of the center. I wonder if you could say also a little bit more about that kind of breaking with, um, I guess, the conventions of a single shot within the animation and the logic of that. Yeah, I, I think it's from, um, so if you, so these works, this film is um, based on the paintings that are now at the Biennale. I'm very grateful to have been involved in another project f with a very strong female, um, Suzanne Cesare-esque lineage. We're in this cultural bond. It's the most, um, along with this historic moment, the only time you've had this many women in history in one exhibition. Um, so I am just giddy <laughs> that I get to be in these spaces by these strong women who are just showing how not only space has been created, but will continue to generate and refract and hopefully recalibrate what we're going through. Um, time. Okay. With that, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank